On behalf of the Town of Deerfield, I call this special town meeting to order. Uh, I've examined the voter sign-in, and I have determined that a quorum is present. I've also examined the warrant and uh, determined that it's in order. I do want to quickly thank Jennifer, who, uh, along with a host of other people who made this venue possible this evening, Bill Hildreth from Frontier. We, uh, we all hope that we're ending the near of this pandemic, the end of it, but um, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to pull this meeting off, and uh, there's a lot of gratitude for the people who make it possible. So um, everybody should have received a copy of the town meeting packet when they came in. It's very helpful to be able to refer to it during the meeting. Um, as always, this meeting is run by a publication called uh, Town Meeting Time and uh, our bylaws. So. Uh, both of those can be difficult to follow sometimes. If there's specific questions, please feel free to raise a point of order and I'll try to address them. My role here tonight is to move this meeting along in an orderly fashion, but allow everyone to be able to speak their opinions. Um, and it's really critical that we respect one another in, our, in how we express our opinions and that we listen and that we uh, don't interrupt speakers. So. Um, in, ter in terms of the process, the proponent will make the motion. It will be seconded. The proponent will give a brief overview of the motion. Uh, if there are committee recommendations, those will be made. And then at that point, it will be open to discussion. When that discussion concludes, we'll take a vote. Everybody should have received a card when they came in. This is a little different venue than the auditorium, so if you can just keep them up high and keep them up until the count is completed, it makes counting easier. Um, if you do want to speak, please stand and wait to be recognized. Uh, FCAT will be located on both sides. They'll run the mic over. Um, when you do get your turn at the mic, please just state your name and your street that you're living on, um, and you can speak from there. Um, at this point, I'd like to introduce the head table, starting with the far right. If you could just introduce yourselves. Denise Mason, Planning Board. Anna Lee Wolf Cool, Planning Board. Trevor McDaniel, Select Board, Board of Health. Board Carolyn Ness, Select Board, Board of Health. Dave Wolfram, Select Board, Board of Health. Casey Warren, Town Administrator. Lisa Meek, Council. Dan Graves, Moderator. Barbara Hancock, Treasurer, Collector, Town Clerk. Brenda Hill, Town Accountant. Allison Vandervelden, yeah. Finance Committee. Julie Chalfont, Finance Committee. John Paturk, Finance Committee. Skip Olmstead, Finance Committee. Jim Cambius, Finance Committee. John Pareski, Finance Committee. Um, we've done the best we can with the sound, and uh, if there is a point in the meeting where you can't hear one of the speakers or you can't hear me, please feel free to raise your, order, your hand to a point of order and we'll try to address that as well. So at this point, I have two initial motions. The initial motion is that I move that the reading of all articles be waived and that prior to the reading of a motion under the article, the moderator briefly summarize the content of the article to be considered and further that unless objection is raised, the reading of the detailed motions be waived where the article as printed can and the opinion of the moderator be incorporated by reference in any motion presented. Is there a second? Basically, this just allows me to summarize the motions and the articles that have been presented uh, in an attempt to expedite the meeting. Are there any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries by a simple majority. I move that the following people be allowed to address the audience during the town meeting. Attorney Lisa Mead, town council. Brenda Hill, town accountant. Casey Warren, town administrator. Mark Borenstein, Counsel to Treehouse Brewing Company, and Carl Sear, Frontier Regional Athletic Director. Is there a second? Uh, thank you. According to our bylaws, uh, in order for a non-resident to speak, it, it needs to be permitted by uh, motion. So that's what this motion is attempted to, to address. All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. And with that, we'll start with the main, main articles. Uh, article number one, Mr. Wolfram. Yeah. 
I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of one thousand seven hundred forty-four dollars to fund the fiscal year. I don't think we can hear you. Can, can you hear me? No. Can you hear me now? I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $1,744 to fund a fiscal year 2020 unanticipated bill for town building assessment survey. Second. Mr. Wolfram. This bill is for the mailing costs of online survey of residents regarding the town building use. The finance committee wish to be heard. Yes, the finance committee has the same um, comments on the Julie, first. I don't, think we, I don't huh? think we can hear you. Sorry. The Finance Committee has the same comments on the first four articles, all four articles. We support all four articles. Um, it is the responsibility of the town to pay our bill as these um, bills are a legal obligation of the town. Um, one of the impacts of not paying our bills is that it could adversely affect our bond rating and we have significant borrowing. Um, going on for our sewer upgrades and other work that we're doing, and uh, we feel it's very important that we do pay our bills. Thank you. Are there any questions or discussion on Article 1? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries by a nine tenths majority. Article 2, uh, actually unanimously. Article 2, uh, Ms. Shores Ness. I move the town transfer from free cash the sum of $7,920 to fund a fiscal year 2019 unanticipated bill for the Mill Village Road Upper Watershed Study. Second. Ms. Shorsness. This was an overlooked bill that was incurred when we were applying for the hazardous mitigation grant from MEMA and it ended up uh, being used for information engineering for the MVP grant that did not cover this cost. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 3, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $6,200 to fund a fiscal year 2019 unanticipated bill for Deerfield Mass Planning Board Peer Review, Dollar General. Second. Second. Mr. McDaniel. Um, so this bill is for additional peer review tasks that are contracted by the planning board for the Dollar General project in 2019 as part of the site plan review process. This bill was not submitted for payment until 2020. Any questions or discussion? Right here, please. If you can just come to the center of the aisle and the mic will come up to you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Max Antes. I'm uh, Stillwater Road. And the applicants are supposed to pay all uh, peer review fees. Why are we asking the taxpayers yes. to pay for it? Mr. McDaniel? That is correct. They are. As long as the planning board first seeks approval from the applicant for this peer review, and they had not done so, so the applicant was not aware. This was a second review that the planning board asked on this property. And for some reason or another, I'm not sure why it was, but the, but the planning board had not gotten approval from the applicant for this bill before the contract work had been done. So we, you know, regardless of how we got here, we still owe the money because the town asked for the work and is contracted for the work. That's where we're at. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, at the front table. Can you hear me now? There it is. Um, Allison Vanderbilt I'm on Hillside Road and Finance Committee, and I just wanted to point out that this item was uh, a little bit contentious previously, um, but I think there's a misunderstanding there. Part of that is that if it, it's sort of like having a, a bill, like a, your credit card bill, you have to pay it first, and then if you want to contest it then you, you go through the process, but not passing this article um, could have a pretty detrimental effect on our town's borrowing potential, and it's a really bad time to, to do that. So I strongly encourage everybody to um, 
approve that we pay this bill. Mr. Decker, just wait for the mic, please. My question is, at what date and who approved this contract? Was this contract approved at a public meeting, or was it just approved by the former chairman or a group of the board members? Uh, before we pay this bill, we make sure that we're legally obligated for it. And my question is, was it authorized by the planning board itself, or did they authorize the chairman to, to agree to this, or what is the origin of the bill? Planning board no, or? Select board. Well, you want to take it, Casey? I can go ahead, Casey. Casey Warren, town administrator. This was a contract amendment signed by the chair of the planning board prior to the work being completed. So that was the authority. However, I don't believe the money was obtained prior to that. Anyone else? Mr. Decker, briefly, get you a mic. The chairman authorized it, but was he authorized by the board to sign this amended contract? I, I don't think it needs to be addressed. Uh, is there any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Yes. Uh, Bruce St. Peter's, uh, Snowberry Circle. I understand that there's a lot of contentious on this uh, particular bill, and rightfully so. However, you're putting the onus on the town and the vendor, and instead the planning board and any other committee that is, uh, has a power to do a contract should be uh, scolded and uh, taught that the procedures that necessary to go through before there is any money, uh, any contract signed for any. If the town does not pay this bill, if and when we need these vendors somewhere down the road, they'll have nothing to do with the town. It's not their fault that they, uh, that they um, are owed money. It is somebody, the, the procedure fell through the cracks, it was not followed, and everybody's trying to take it out on the vendor, which is not right. Mr. Hilty. Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. You can just speak right up. Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. Um, I watched the meeting at which this was discussed, and it was a planning board meeting led by the former chairman, John Waite, I recall. And there, the, uh, the applicants were in attendance, so they were aware that the town was going to be seeking further study, but obviously the one step of getting a prior approval um, must have been overlooked, and of course the applicant no longer has any, any interest in paying the bill because they're not seeking to build here now. All those in favor of the motion as presented. Those opposed? The motion carries by a nine-tenths majority. Article four, Mr. Wolfram. I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $350 to fund a fiscal year 2018 unanticipated bill for the cost of an appraisal for town-owned land. Second. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Wolfram? This is a bill for the appraisal of town owned land, map 169, lot 186, located adjacent to Jewett Avenue, near the old Oxford Pickle property. So this is an appraisal near, for the uh, property near the Oxford Pickle factory, is that correct? It just was hard to hear you. It's right next door. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 5, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town vote uh, correct. Uh, 
correct a funding source reference to the summary appropriation of Article 5 omnibus budget of the annual town meeting warrant for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021 as follows. I move that the town appropriate $15,905,706 to fund the accepted amounts voted and to meet this appropriation transfer, uh, $57,425 from the SCEMS Enterprise Fund, $5,716 from the South County Senior Fund, uh, $55,140 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund, $6,432 from receipts reserved for debt, and $8,997 from free cash, and raise and appropriate $15,771,996. Second. Mr. McDaniel, if you could briefly explain the motion. Sure. This, uh, this is to uh, correct um, kind of uh, so an error we had in the printing of our last, uh, our annual town meeting in the fall. Um, you can so just stay real close to the mic. Yes, I'm sorry. So, it, excuse me, in the, in the spring at our annual town meeting, what was printed um, in the article um, wasn't accurate. It, uh, so we're just correcting what we had originally had in the last meeting. It doesn't change the vote. When the you amount. say it wasn't accurate, can you just explain what, what, what was so, inaccurate? Uh, maybe Casey might be able to help with that, but I, I think it was, it was just uh, a table got copied over in, into the thing that wasn't quite accurate. Ms. Hill. Yes. Um, the funding sources for the omnibus budget were just last year's numbers, so this is a correction to make the funding sources this year's numbers. Thank you. Any questions? All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. There was one question. Sorry, I'm not seeing you. Just keep your hand up high. Yeah. Yes, please. Your name and your street address. Uh, does anybody know what the difference was between the last year's budget and this budget? Are these printings? The, like $1,000, a it million? Was, dollars it was approximately $11,000. Any other questions? Or con yes. I'd like to say that the Finance Committee supported this. It was an administrative mistake, and I would like to point out that the total... 15905706 did not change, and the amount that is raised and appropriated, which is how much your taxes are, does not change. The only thing that changed on here are the amounts from various funds that are there. Thank you. Very helpful. Any other questions or comments? Uh, just one correction to that. The raise and appropriate is actually $11,000 and some change less than what we had originally voted in June because of the change in the funding sources. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 6, Mr. Wolfram. Mr. Wolfram. I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $150,000 for repairs to the Congreg uh, Congregational Church building contingent upon the approval of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Second. Mr. Wolfham. These are repairs for a temporary and intended to continue to provide senior services in this uh, central location while a plan is developed to uh, improve uh, what we're going to be doing with the seniors and also provide an outlet for a community center at the same time. And finance? Finance committee did vote to support this article. There is definite unease with the uncertainty of the repair scope, but the building is a town resource and the repairs are needed and a place for the senior center to move to is needed. Um, so we decided as a group to approve this request. Any questions or comments? Yes, sir. Again, if you can just state your name and your street you're living on when you first speak, it's appreciated. David Ray, One Allen Drive. 
Is that $150,000 an estimate, or do you have contractor bids for that? Mr. Wolfram? Uh, currently, we have an estimate of $115,000. Mr. Wolfram, if you can just speak into the mic, sorry. Uh, we have, currently, we have an estimate of $115,000 for the repairs, for the necessities for making it uh, uh, compliant. And uh, we added, for contingency, about $35,000, just in case planning on using local contractors as much as possible, volunteer contractors. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. And is that 115 uh, a number that came from a contractor? How was it generated? Mr. Wolfram? I, I didn't hear it. Was it 115 from a contractor, or how did you arrive at that number? Uh, part of it was for contracted uh, with the help of the engineering staff from Deerfield Academy. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, uh, when you speak, if you can just try to stand and head to the center aisle just to try to keep the mics as... Uh... Linda Kelly, Gromacki Avenue. It's my understanding that the second congregational church, the congregational church has been deemed to be torn down. That's the email I received as a former member and I don't understand why we would put this money into that facility if it indeed is going to be torn down. The current arrangement, as I also read about using Holy Family Church for the seniors, seems like a fabulous arrangement, even if it takes a year or two until a decision is made about a more permanent fix for the senior center. Somebody on the select board wish to address that, or more the first part? Okay. The, uh Currently, we have a temporary situation where we can use the John Paul Center, but it is very temporary. Uh, so the structure of the Congregational Church is in a lot better shape than we were originally led to believe. Uh, there is an issue with the steeple, but we're just going to be using the sanctuary area and the kitchen. So uh, the repairs are a temporary step gap until we can figure out what we're going to do with the current Senior Center building. Any other questions? Comments? All those in favor of the motion as presented? All those opposed? Motion requires a simple majority and that has been met, so it passes. Article 7, Mr. McDaniel. I move that the town amend Town of Deerfield zoning bylaw by deleting the word selectmen each time it appears in said bylaw and inserting the term select board in place thereof and further deleting the words board of selectmen each time it appears and inserting in place thereof the term select board and further that the town clerk uh, be authorized to make clerical, editorial, or other adjustments related to non uh, related to the non-gendered reference to effectuate the purposes of here of. Second. Second. Mr. McDaniel. So um, this is. Uh, it's right into the mic. We, we had worked on this uh, in the April, or excuse me, the, the spring town meeting, and we had this coming from general bylaws, and it also appears in our zoning. And, it, and it, uh, we hope to do both at the same time, but we had to have a hearing for this, this part in the zoning, so this is just taking care of the paperwork and getting the, rid of the word select men and being more general new, neutral to a select board, which we've been practicing that way, and fairly, frankly, it's the right, right thing to do anyways. So here we are. Did the planning board have any opinion on this? The planning board passed this unanimously. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by a nine-tenths majority. Two-thirds? Article 8, Ms. Shores Ness. I move that the town amend the Town of Deerfield Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 179, Article 2, entitled Use and Dimensional Requirements, Section 2300, entitled Dimensional Requirements, subsection 2320, entitled 
table of dimensional requirements by adding a new superscript 9 after frontage in parentheses feet in the column entitled principal use by adding sequentially a superscript 9 at the end of the notes section thereof with accompanying text as presented in the warrant. Second. Ms. Shores Ness, what does that mean? <laughs> it means the select board at, is, is we're in the middle of a demo, democratic process and we as a select board are bringing ideas forward for the town to vote on. We have two projects in mind, developing the Leary lot for parking and access to Elm Street and we are truly limited to 50 feet in that access, access exit to Elm Street. And we would like to um, do the park road with a more uh, access, with more appropriate roadway than a subdivision road. And we, so we are asking the town to um, allow us to have the 50 foot frontage waiver or change our zoning so we can have the 50 foot frontage. This is Article 97 land already. It's only for park and recreational use. And we would like the support of the town on this. Uh, a similar motion was brought before the town meeting in the summer, so that would require uh, unanimous approval from the planning board, and the plan, or favorable approval, I should say. Has the planning board have an opinion, or has it taken a vote? The planning board was unanimously in approval of this Thank amendment. You. Has the finance committee wished to weigh in at all? Or? Finance Committee did discuss this. There were two. Just right um, up against the mic. I'm sorry. Sorry. There we go. Um, the Finance Committee did discuss this at length, like everything. Um, we there were sort of two competing opinions from the financial impact. One is that the municipal expenditures would be greatly reduced by approving this because they would be able to um, move forward on the projects that they have without having to go through special considerations. The opposing opinion was that it may have an adverse impact on individual property owners' property values. Um, the first opinion, that of the municipal expenditures, um, heavily overweighed the other one, so the Finance Committee did end up uh, supporting this. Any discussion? Let's start here. If you could just come to the middle or whatever you're comfortable doing, just wait for the mic. So is it specifically for just those two municipal pieces of property? It's Ms. Shores, Ness. It's, we only have, the town owns in, in the industrial uh, area um, only one property that has less than 100 feet, which is the park property. We can do a subdivision road in there now. We're hoping not to, to make a big highway. We would rather have an appropriate road. And the other industrial parcel is the rural lot, which has access to both 5 and 10 and North Main Street. Now, on the, on the C1 uh, pro, uh, zoning, that's the Leary lot. That is the only town loan property as well. Um, the Center D Village District zoning is the town hall area and the library and the senior center, which has access already. So there are the two projects. It, this does not involve Brayburn because Brayburn only has a 35 foot access and is not appropriate. And the road itself, Brayburn Avenue, is only 19 feet wide and is not appropriate, also. Okay, that answers my question. But this would be in place for all future municipal lots, correct? Yeah. yeah. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, I'm, if you don't mind, I'm going to grab the front table, and then uh, I, I missed you earlier. I apologize. Hi, John Pareski. I don't have an issue with the 50-foot. Uh, can you hear me? I hope so. Well, I don't have an issue with the 50-foot limitation. 
but I do, I think it's wrong to limit it to just the municipality. If the 50 feet is safe for the municipality and everything else that goes to that reduction, it should be safe for the taxpayers as well. And um, I think by wording this so it's a municipality only, we're heading down a road where we're going to have two sets of rules, one for the municipality and one for the taxpayers. And I'm not comfortable with that. And I'd like to amend the motion to exclude the limitation to the municipality, if I can do that. Uh, if you'd like to amend the motion, that would have to be in writing. Yeah, and speaking of council, that would subsequently change the, the bylaw that's been uh, public hearings occurred on. So that motion is outside of the scope, unfortunately. Okay, I'm hear sorry. You. To amend the motion at this point. So in order to make a bylaw amendment, there has to be a, a process through the town. Uh, there are certain meetings that have to occur, publication. And so an amendment like that at this point, uh, and speaking to town council, would be out of order because none of that that needed to occur before it ha occurred and therefore people that may have that opinion wouldn't have been given adequate notice to be here tonight or to speak or to vote. So that's considered out of order. So. Here. Can you hear me? Yes. That, okay. Just your name. Hi, I'm Lily Dwight, 45 South Mill River Road, and I ask you to vote yes on this article. In the largest sense, this bylaw is a first step toward village-focused development that is anti-sprawl and preserves farmland. It brings added vitality to the village center and ex that extends all the way up to Mill Village Road and down to 116. Uh, many of you know senior housing is near and dear to my heart and it gives us the ability to develop small clusters in the center village. This keeps our older adults integrated, vital members of the community and it locates them, or maybe I should say us, in walking distance of town, medical, recreational, and business services. For the park, the park is owned by all of us. We are the town. The park is happening. We decided that at annual town meeting in 2020. It is not a question of if, it is a question of how. The bylaw saves us hundreds of thousands of dollars and enables us to preserve the environment along the driveway rather than require a subdivision road with an expanded width and the loss of mature trees and the other disturbances of road building. It is a community asset owned by all of us, for all of us, with walking trails, soccer fields for school and adult recreation, pavilions, and it's walkable from town services. And certainly, we expect that the people living in the neighborhood should be active participants in the development of this asset, along with the rest of the community. And already their input has changed the design and it's still all in process. Um, there have been comments on the interwebs that this should apply to residents as well, and you brought that up. Personally, I agree with that. But that is a separate proposal that needs to go through the extensive bylaw amendment process that this bylaw has done over the last year. This bylaw does not preclude or prevent the passage of that amendment. So I urge you, vote yes if you are for revitalization of our town center. Vote yes if you are for developing senior housing that fits our village character. Vote yes if you are for saving hundreds of thousands of dollars and preserving more of the environment for our park. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Mary Moore, I live on Thayer Street. First, I'd like to point out that Ms. Ness did not answer the question she was asked. A simple yes or no would have done. Also, um, I'm afraid that you're dangling a couple of no-brainer projects in front of us, and I wonder uh, projects that most people would agree to, I believe, but I wonder if there are some other projects that nobody's talking about that will then be covered 
if you sneak this, if you pass this amendment. Thank you. Right here. I'm Judith Rathbone, 131 North Main. I'm voting against Article 8. And with all due respect to the opinion that was expressed by Lily, I feel it's a mischaracterization. This will result in the wholesale redevelopment of a wooded area, removing all wildlife, birds, and plants. Article 8 says the town government would only need 50 feet. In the industrial district where I live, the requirement is 200. We just voted down a proposal giving the town exemption. We're pretty much back with the same thing. I don't know why. This proposed bylaw would apply to any property the town now owns or obtains in the future in the three districts. So the town could build a DPW terminal or sewage pumping station on a property with only 50 feet of frontage, even if the property is located between two residential properties. This is unfair to anyone who owns property that doesn't have the required minimum frontages. These people cannot develop their properties while the town government can. This proposed zoning change is a really radical departure for Deerfield, with the town government wanting to be exempt and put themselves above the people in the law. Intensive development of town property where the property has little frontage would be truly detrimental. We don't know because we don't have a map of every single town property and everyone who lives near a town property does not even necessarily know that they live near a town property. So you'd be voting in the dark about something that needs additional information and additional study. Never mind the fact that this massive development between two residential properties, mine being one of them, bringing cars, vans, and buses for hundreds of people is supposedly going to happen. No one, the town or the private developer, should be allowed to do this. It will destroy all plant and animal life for those eight five acres, never mind a few trees on the way in. We don't know about other town properties. The North Main property is a terrible site for intensive development. I'm willing to purchase the property for the same price the town paid for it so the town does not lose money. I intend to preserve it. Don't vote for this proposal now. When we voted it down before, we said we needed more studies and more input. I just attended the Thursday night second hastily scheduled he public hearing because they made a mistake and forgot to include the industrial district the first time around. Do you know how long the frontage issue for North Main got discussed? 15 minutes. That is hardly robust input. So this article reached, again, the town meeting with a bare minimum of hearings required. Please vote no. This could be an extremely close vote. If you feel, Dan, the moderator is not able to accurately gauge the exact numbers after he gives his response. Ms. Rathbone, there's been a point of order. Wait for the microphone, please. It was a point of order that was raised. I don't believe you, and you'd have to stand and make that, Mr. Decker. You know the rules. Jennifer Remillard, Conway Street. She should not be disparaging the moderator's opinion. We voted on, and obviously we felt that he was good enough for this job to do his job. Thank you. May I finish? May I finish? I did not disparage the moderator. What I said was, if you feel the count is close, stand up and say that you question the vote so that there will be an accurate tally given. No one's disparaging anyone. Thank you very much. Please vote no.
Mr. Decker has moved the question, uh, which essentially means that we would stop debate uh, and take a vote. In order for that motion, Mr. Decker's motion, to be successful, there would have to be a two-thirds majority of uh, voters here this evening. So again, at this point, if you do not wish to debate the matter further, then the question would be called and you'd be voting favorably for that. Then we would move to the actual motion. Does everyone understand? All those in favor of moving the question? Uh, one moment, I apologize. Yes, Mr. Wolfram. Is there a second to Mr. Decker's motion? There is a second. All those in favor? You're all set over here. Could you just keep the voice down for a moment, please? Could the front table stop speaking, please? The front table wish to vote. Uh, all those opposed to calling the question? I'm going to count the table first. The table's all set. You're all set as well. The motion to call the question does not carry, so debate will continue. Uh, right here, yes. Thank you, Jennifer Remillard, Conway Street. In research done regarding other community frontages, it's been an average of 20 feet for access, not just for municipality-owned properties, but for general. And as the individual from Finance Committee brought up, that's a bylaw proposal that can be brought up at a future hearing. So if you're interested in having more than just res or municipality properties being brought up, you know, I think that's a great idea. But there are over 300 acres of municipal owned property throughout Deerfield. I continuously hear and see complaints online and in person that people are afraid of taxes going up here. If we have the ability to develop this property in a way that everyone votes on, because let's face it, none of these projects are done in the dark. Everything is presented in a public hearing, in person where you can comment, where you can vote, and it's a democratic process. The town is very apt at publishing everything online for when hearings are, posting it in town. As you can see by a good portion of people here, I'm sure a lot of you saw it on Facebook. You got your robocall from Chief Petorik. Everything is done above the board. In addition, Ms. Rathburn talks about purchasing the property. It was purchased with CPA funds meaning that that property is forever preserved if a park somehow does not move forward. The park process will be brought forward in front of the planning board, in front of the um, CPC, Conservation Commission, and everyone else who has to have an opinion on this. Then, and we all voted for it at town meeting to purchase this property. We voted this past fall, or past spring meeting to um, increase the budget 
I, I believe, by like another million dollars. We voted on that. This was not done in the dark. So how about looking at Deerfield for the next 350 years, not just looking back where we have been, where we can go. I like being able to have time in the community to take my dog, my family, to a local area. I have to drive to Sunderland to get to the closest park. I cannot be in my town. So I strongly support this and I hope you will too. Thank you. Mr. McDaniel. The other, uh, thank you for allowing us to continue to, to have a vote. Um, I think it's, it is the democratic process to be able to, you know, to, to get our ideas out there instead of calling a question 15, you know, five minutes into this. Um, we, we've been working really hard to try and to get space for our community for economic development, for a place for our children to, to be, um, have sports, have games, not being dropped off in another town. And, you know, when, when you have parents that don't have a lot of means, how are they getting their children home in the dark at a different, at, at a different town? There's a lot of reasons that, you know, the park should go forward. We need a place to gather. There's a lot of reasons that we should be developing our downtown um, and to, to make our businesses more attractive and spaces to park for our businesses so resi residents and people from all over can park um, and maybe have a small pocket park down there where you can grab food and come out and sit have a nice meal, enjoy your family. We need places to gather and enjoy each other's company. Um, when we talk about frontage and zoning laws, we change these all the time. We have articles tonight. We have articles last meeting. Every, every meeting, it seems like we're adjusting our zoning to fit what we need in our community today. And um, if, if you look at Pelican, the building right behind it, what does it have for frontage? I think two very small entrances into a gigantic spot. Now, if, it was sta if that property that we're talking about, the park, stayed an industrial property, Pelican could just build right over onto that property and you'd have machines stamping in the background and trucks going in and out. We're talking children laughing and, and small concerts and people walking their dogs. And this is not a wastewater treatment plant. Trust me, we have enough money going into one or two of those already. We're not planning on building another. So let's, and we've already paid for a garage, so we're, we're not building another DPW transit. I just think it's important to move our town forward, look forward to the next 350 years, as Jennifer said, and start doing the projects that make our town beautiful and move our, our town forward. So thank you. Uh, woman in the black coat. Hi, I'm Fran York from Ward Avenue. So if each of these projects needs to be go, between, go before all of the boards to be approved, why do we have to have a blanket 50-foot frontage? And is the Pelican property a 50-foot frontage, or is that just the opening to get to the thing, but the property itself is much wider frontage? Mr. McDaniel, briefly. So just to re reply on the Pelican property, they have no frontage other than two small driveways to go in, if you look at the lots. Very, very little frontage on that property. That was just to bring up an example of our, our zoning changes all the time, and we have different, different spots in different areas. Um, I'm not sure what your other, other question was. We, we have to bring this before us instead of doing it one at a time or going before something else, you, you have to lay it out for the people to make a change to move forward. Uh, there's a question up there. Laurie Busada, 193 North Main Street. I am very happy, Ms. Rathbone, that you are interested in conservation. I do hope the land behind your house, the beautiful wooded property becomes conservation land. Because we are voting to adjust our town's 50-foot um, requirement for our town, that does not might mean that we are voting on a plan for the park or any other piece of property. We are just voting on the frontage. There are lots of opportunities to have input, and we've been asked to have input into the design of that property 
and other properties, um, including the Leary lot. We had a, a session at a conference about two years ago where we all sat around the table and wrote down our visions. So there are lots of opportunities to participate in this town, our town, and who owns what property is not a secret. I recently become pretty uh, comfortable with the town assessor's map, so you can look up where, who, who owns any property in town. It's not a secret, it's very um, public information. Uh, any other comments? And I just, uh, obviously the park is impacted by this, but just please be mindful that this is a zoning bylaw change. It's meant to be uh, broad and impact municipal properties. So it's okay to advocate for the park or be against the park, but also just be mindful of what the, the actual uh, motion before you is. So Mr. Hilchey. Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. This is specifically about frontage and has nothing to do with any projects the town may wish to do. Um, the, the, av the average um, frontage on North Main Street for the average property is about 67 feet. The frontage that's uh, being, um, that the park would be accessing is 65 feet. So it's a two foot difference between the average of frontages that already exist on that street. There are some properties that have significantly more than that. I believe one has 321 feet. But most of them are under the 100 foot already. So I just wanted people to be aware of that because uh, the, Merrigan, the Merrigan Way Road, uh, access road on um, Sugarloaf is only 32 feet wide and it has sidewalks. And everybody who goes to the vaccine clinics there or, or visits the highway department or tra travels to Pilot, that's the kind of road that I believe the town's looking to build um, that would be a lot less expensive than a subdivision road. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sear, did you wish to speak? I was told you did. <laughs> yes. I will get the microphone to you right over here. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Is it on? Can you hear me? Um, so this is variant stuff, but I was asked to just talk about how the... Mr. Sear, yeah. I, I did introduce you at the beginning, but if you could just tell uh, the townspeople your role. Sure. I'm the uh, Frontier Regional Athletic Director. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I was asked to talk about the fields in terms of Frontier's view of them. Um, so currently, the fields that we use are, for many of our sports, are not in this town. We um, we bus kids to Hurley and the Sugar Sunderland Elementary School and Sunderland Rec Field for practice every day. Um, this basically in the fall, we spend ten thousand dollars a year busing our kids from here to those towns, um, and then in the spring for the spring sports, it's another five thousand dollars. So we're spending fifteen thousand dollars a year because we basically don't have enough fields here on campus. Um, a couple other things just to consider. Um, I know that they're thinking that those will be soccer fields at the new park. Um, they could be used for other things too, but in terms of soccer here, we, we have approximately 100 kids in the fall that play soccer on the five different teams we offer. So that's a, a lot of kids that that would affect school-wise. Um, other sports could benefit. I know there's not a plan for a baseball diamond there, but you could still use the, f the, the field itself for baseball or ultimate frisbee. Um, other issues with the fields we use, the Sunderland Rec Field, we can only use that because it's not our field until 5.30 each day. Um, recently, the league's changed in terms of who we play. So we play a number of Berkshire teams. And what happens with that is we have to start the game later. We've shortened many of the JV games. So kids are playing on these JV level teams and we're shortening the game because we don't have the field that we can have access to later in the night. Um, other things that are happening because our, our field is further away, um, if we had closer fields, kids, right now kids are getting in their own car and driving to those fields where if we could, you know, kids statistically speaking are not as good drivers as adults. So if we cut down on any driving that kids are doing, that's obviously a good thing. Um, this congestion, we, we go over there after school to Sunderland Elementary School, there's a lot of congestion, an extra bus, another, you know, 20 to 30 kids in the confusion of, um, the dismissal time. A really big thing here is that all those kids that are getting bused to another field, if they want extra help after school, they have to kind of choose school or sports. We all know what the right choice should be, but they can't stay with their teacher for a little bit and then walk over to practice. They have to get a ride from their parents, from a friend, or miss practice altogether. Um, 
And then all of these fields, it's, they're jam-packed with, with, in terms of being used. So there's no time for, you know, to treat the fields the way they're supposed to be treated in terms of ir um, irrigating them and just letting them rest so that the grass can regrow. Um, I know when we look out here at these fields, they look amazing and, and they are amazing, but there's not nearly enough space out here for the amount of sports and activities that we offer here at Frontier. That's kind of what I had, unless people had specific questions for me. I don't know if that's allowed. No, thank you, sir. Uh, any other comments on the motion before the town regarding municipal frontage? Uh, again, the vote has been uh, taken on the park. This clearly impacts the park, but that is not the nature of this motion. So if there's more comments on that. Uh, Mr. Decker, have you spoken on this already or no? Okay. I, I want to point out the fact that initially when Harding built their buildings in the early 60s, we didn't have any zoning. Okay, they right. had the one driveway a little bit across the street from where Paul Olszewski lives. Sure. Later they bought what was uh, Matt Noska's father's property, uh, Dana Chevrolet, the, what was the League Act property, included what, uh, Hosley's and was another, another. They probably have 300 feet that have got apple trees there on North Main Street for frontage right now. And then if you go north, uh, they own a prop piece of property that used to belong to the Ruhr family, and it's a great big mowing, okay? So they have an awful lot of frontage available to them in town, and it's not just limited to two driveways, okay? Uh, Mr. Wolfram, and then there's a question over there, or a comment. Okay, um, there's been a lot of discussion about the North Main project. Um, what I want to clarify with a people in the room, one of the things that really started this discussion for this bylaw this time around was the fact that Hampshire Lumber had bought Elder Lumber. And they came to us earlier in the year suggesting a land swap from Railroad Street to a 50-foot right-of-way on the old Fortier property. That way we could have a loop on the Leary lot. Um, so, and all they were willing to Goal on that is 50 feet. So to make that possible and to enhance the Leary lot and actually use some of our ARPA funds to really enhance that, uh, it was prudent of us to put this article in to get this thing rolling. This is going to enhance the downtown area. This is going to enhance uh, the current businesses down there. Uh, BBC, they have uh, approached us for a beer garden on the back side of their property, that would enhance that. The, uh, and you know, you know, and it's a pipe dream of mine, I would like to see some of the traffic taken off Elm Street and put outdoor dining. And the only way we can do that is enhance the parking in the back. And by developing the Leary lot with one-way traffic, we'll be able to do that. And we need that 50 foot to do that. Thank you, Mr. Wolfram. Um, Charlene Galinsky, 342 River Road in South Deerfield. I, I just have a question because, of course, with all of the um, discussions going around in town, there's a lot of information being said, which I, I want verification one way or the other. First of all, if this gets voted down as a no vote today, my understanding is there is a process that the town can use to move it forward, regardless of whether there's a no vote or not. If that, in fact, is true, I've also heard that it will then cost the taxpayers an additional large amount of money to move that pro to move forward with uh, the 50 foot because there is this alternative route. So my question to the people sitting up front, if this becomes a no vote, has there been discussion or will there be a discussion to move this project forward, which then involves more money being asked of us as taxpayers because the vote was not received today? Mr. McDaniel, would you like to address that or town council? Um, I think best from you if you can or would. So, so there, um, no, go ahead, Lisa. No, go ahead, Mr. Okay. McDaniel. So um, there isn't a process. I mean, we're t this is a, a, a bylaw to change for multiple projects that we're doing. If you're just talking about 
the access we would have to the park property, yes, there's a more expensive way and a, and a more expensive road to, to bring that project to, to, um, to start, but it, it, it's just oversized for what we need. So, it, um, but as far as this bylaw goes, it affects so, many, so much more economic development in this town and moving our town forward on so many different levels. It's just so important to, to pass and not just focus on one project. Uh, Attorney Mead wishes to speak as well. So I think, I think just to clarify what uh, the select board member stated, there is the option for the North Main Street project to file for a subdivision road, which by its nature is very typically much more expensive than a standard drive. Uh, there's a question there. Kathy Mountain Lake, Mill Village Road, Deerfield. Um, my question with the Leary Law and making that one way, as far as the safety, will people start using that to go around the four-way stop in the center of town, and won't that be uh, a safety issue? Uh, Ms. Shores Ness, or who's, who's wanting to speak? I don't, I can speak to that, but I, I you know, with, with the plans that we looked at and we still have to develop, we would make sure that that is a slow, speed bumped, you know, uh, it's a parking lot. It's not a, it's not a race around, <laughs> It would, be, it would take you a lot longer to go through that Leary lot than it would be to go through a stop sign and hopefully a stop light in the near future if we could ever make that happen. Any other uh, comments or questions? One moment, Mr. St. Peter. Uh, over there, I believe she was up first and you'll be next. Again, on the motion before the town. Hi, my name is Kathy Wittroba and I live at 18 Thayer Street. And I just want to say that this vote may not be perfect for you. You know, I, I have a town garage behind my house and I worry about people's property values and their quality of life. But there's a, a reason for that, that building to be there. I also owned a business in town too. And I understand the purpose of the center of our town. And that Leary lot is really critical. It's critical for parking, it's critical for businesses, it's critical for Berkshire Brewery. So I'm not, saying how you should vote. What I'm saying is, is your vote may not be perfect. This isn't a nail in the coffin and this isn't a panacea. Like you gotta reconcile this, you gotta think about this. Because if you focus solely on one thing that you want or you don't want, you're gonna lose this bigger picture. And the bigger picture is important. It's important to our community and it's in growth. So I'm not gonna say, I hold my position neutral as I speak, but think about how this affects you and your family, the pros and the cons. It may, it may not be perfect. You might not walk away going, oh, I'm defeated, or oh, I won. You, you have to reconcile this. It's a, there is a little bit of a challenge in here. But think about how you want the community to grow. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to the businesses that need your voice um, and the community that wants safety and peace and you have to reconcile this a little bit. I, I don't know if it's going to be perfect for any of us, but vote your conscience and vote for your family. Thank you. Rue St. Peter's uh, Snowberry Circle. Uh, the focus has been on the uh, park, and uh, mine, so I'll kind of leave that alone a little bit. I think most of what I was going to comment, Ms. Uh, Retrobus spoke, uh, the Leary lot is the second most important thing. Creating a back lot was, if somebody asked about the safety, it would probably increase the safety because the way it is now, once that gets developed and paved, it'll be used a lot more. And with the only entrance out onto Main Street, right next to Greenfield uh, Savings Bank, and right next to Cheslicks and sub, uh, Subway and so forth, you have a ton of pedestrians going through there. This would allow an exit and put them out on Railroad Street and, and possibly eliminate some of that uh, uh, congestion. The other fact is, is everybody just seems to, there's an undertone of thought that 
um, if this passes, the town can do whatever they want, whenever they want, anytime they get a hold of, of a uh, piece of property that's uh, 50 feet wide. It's not the truth. It, all it does is eliminate the whole process, and somebody asks why can't they can't keep coming back. Well, this is a good example. To get a variance, even if it is goes through tonight, this has taken two town meetings, and this is a special town meeting, which is in between. So it could take two to three years uh, to get permission for a 50-foot frontage. This just bypasses that, but if there's wetlands, it still has to go to CONCOM. If there's uh, structures, it still has to get a building permit, uh, and if it needs a, uh, uh, any kind of variance because of lot lines or anything else, it still has to go through the ZBA. It still has to go through the planning board. So this is not uh, a gift to the select board where they can turn around and do anything. The biggest obstacle, even if you don't like the vote, and they're again staying away from the park, this is in the future, there still is, that is only the first step. The next step is uh, it, somewhere along the line, any property that the town may be contemplating purchasing or uh, has, or even by eminent domain, if that came, has to go through another town meeting. At that point in time, it has to, if it goes through, uh, you still have to go through all the boards and so forth, but you also have to go, anything costs money. So now you have to bring it back to town meeting again. So you still have a final say by voting down any appropriation that may or may not uh, be required for any kind of development. So it's a very involved process, a very time-consuming process. This is just to help speed this process up a little bit for, for the park, uh, park mostly cost because that can proceed anyway, but for the Leary lot and in the opportunity the town may have in the future to develop one of the very few uh, town lots that are in the CVRD C1 or industrial zone. Thank you. Is there anyone, is there anyone else who uh, doesn't feel that there an opinion similar to theirs has been made or would like to make final comment? Uh, we've got one right here and then over there. Hi, I'm Max Antis from Stillwater Road. And the question of frontage is always, to me, something about whether or not you're going to put up a structure. And if you're not going to put up a structure, why are we getting so concerned with frontage? Does anyone wish to respond? Or? A question for us all to ponder, Mr. Antis. Thank you. Um, over there in the corner, please. Hi, my name is Gail, and I live on North Main Street, right in front of the North Main Street project. I would like to hold off on this vote. It looks like there's too much people's opinions that are going against each other. I think Pelican's numbers of frontage is really, really off. Um, I just think we should hold off and do a little bit more thinking, because it looks like a half and half situation going on here maybe do a little bit more research. That's all. There's a second on the call of the question. All those in favor of calling the question. We're all set over here. All those opposed? <laughs> the 
question has been called. Uh, all those in favor of the motion as presented. This side is all set. Are those opposed? The motion carries by two thirds. <laughs> Article nine, Miss Wolfram or Miss Wolfkill, I'm sorry. Yes, I move that the town amend the Deerfield zoning bylaws by replacing Chapter 179. Miss Wolfkill, I'm just going to take about a 30 second recess. That's okay. There is other business to be done. If you are going to exit, if you could just do so quietly so we can continue. Ms. Wolfcool. Oh, yes. All right. My turn. I move that the town amend the Deerfield zoning bylaws by replacing Chapter 179, Section 4306, flood, floodplain regulations as presented in the warrant. Second. Ms. Wolfcool. Yes. Um, as some of you may remember, the floodplain zoning bylaws were approved at town meeting several seasons ago. Um, there are three words referencing a Massachusetts building code section that need to be removed. They need to be removed because the building code has been updated by Massachusetts and that section no longer exists. So we are asking to remove the three words currently section one, uh, 744. Did the planning board vote on this as well? Planning board voted unanimously in favor. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by a two-thirds majority. Article 10. Ms. Shores Ness. I move that the town amend the Deerfield Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 179, 
to add a new section, 4950, entitled Tourism Overlay District, as printed in the handout, which strikes the final two sentences in the paragraph titled 4953. Second. Ms. Shores, if you could briefly explain the purpose of the motion. Um, the two sentences that we're striking are redundant and provided, uh, provides an internal conflict with the bylaw, and they were initially um, uh, deleted in the first read and um, were accidentally put back in. Uh, it was really a clerical error. But this overlay district allows the breweries um, to do some activities by rights, like tours, tasting, classes, et cetera and to go to the planning board for special permit on other issues. It captures the synergy of all the breweries together, all three of them that are in town, and pulls the tourist kind of business activities into our revitalized downtown area. The planning board uh, meet on this, Ms. Wolfkuhl? Planning board voted unanimously in favor of this warrant article. Are there any questions? Yes, Mr. Antes, right behind you. Max Antes, Stillwater Road. My question would be, why not just do a special permit and do it on a case-by-case -case basis rather than an overlay district, which I frequently refer to as spot zoning? Um, that way, you can look at if the property changes hands, it's not in an overlay district. You can review it. it. It's not granted and doesn't go with the property. Select board wish to comment. Uh, the, idea, the idea was to allow the breweries a certain uh, normal activity that's, that they would do, like classes, pourings, testing, tasting kind of things, um, and not have to come to a special permitting process. And the other, uh, everything else is special permit through the planning board. I'm looking to the future beyond the brewery. If they leave or my pro issues with the, the going with the property and not with the, the owner. Well, all I can say is that we had um, want to make the brewery successful and we feel comfortable at this point. The um, always zoning can be changed, but we do feel comfortable with having them do this kind of activity as by right. Mr. Camosa, did you have a comment? Kip Camosa, Greenfield Road. Um, I just want some clarity. Article 10 is just the creation of the tourist overlay district, and Article 11 is where it's actually going to be located. But I can't help, because I've read this quite a bit, this article seems like it's been designed for one business and one business only, because many of the majority things in the size and scope of it, there's only one place in town this could happen for. But I'm still for it, but I'm just making that point. Ms. Shores Ness. Um, the idea was to incorporate all three of the breweries that are in town and to not, uh, um, you know, incorporate any residential areas. The, the Leary lot is in, in the Berkshire Brewing and, and the area where the barbecue is, is included because we wanted to include Berkshire Brewing, but the development of the Leary lot will be to alleviate parking in the neighborhoods around there and to encourage good activity. Mr. Decker. Mr. Moderator. I'd like to call the attention that we're not talking about the map yet, but this is premature. This should come to the annual town meeting, and we should actually look at all the parcels that are involved uh, that are commercial and tourism related from, from the Whateley Town Line to Cheapside Bridge. There are some very valuable pieces of property that have been excluded, and they should be included in this district if the town feels that the district is viable and what they want to encourage. You've got it stops at uh, the veterinary clinic on Route 5 on one side of the road. It goes, all, goes up further on the land that Treehouse owns, and then it, it doesn't get picked up all the way to the, 
to Greenfield Line. There is a lot of property that should be included, and this is a spot zoning from day one. There's just a little bit of window dressing by some of the other things that were put in there, but they've overlooked other properties. You look at North Street, they've looked at, uh, they put the side on the east side, they included. On the west side, they haven't included a couple pieces of the property there. And some other things. They should be looking at the whole thing. If they really want to encourage tourism, we should, we should encourage it and we should study it right and bring it in so it, it's fair and it's equitable to all. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Mr. Elty. Well, no, go, go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, I'll go after. Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. I wanted to sort of second a couple of things that uh, Max Ante said in a, a I, I disagree with him in that we should revert to a special permitting process, but I do agree that it should be an experiment with people who have a proven track record. Um, the town has a very good track record with Berkshire Brewing asking for special permits. They have a very good track record with Yankee Candle asking for special permits. They uh, have a, a new a tenant in town, Treehouse Brewing, which has a track record across the state of being a, a responsible citizen and a good business for the communities that they locate in. So this will give the town the opportunity to explore, is a tourism district a good idea or is it uh, an idea that we want to just limit? So by starting with a few uh, centrally located properties, I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Yes. I just wanted to add that the Finance Committee does support this article. We feel that it promotes economic activity in the town. Thank you. Mr. McDaniel? And I, I think the, the case here is to kind of uh, walk before you run, and, and this, is, this is a substantial change, and I think that it's important to kind of uh, uh, take into the account the, the, the places that we wanted to start this, and I, I'm not opposed to expanding it. I think it's important to kind of see how this runs, um, take, the, take the year, and, and look at how, how it's been developed. Can we adjust it? Um, we, we come back before town meeting many times and adjust bylaws and overlays, and I think it's important to, to kind of see how this works out and maybe expand it going forward. But I, to do a blanket, you know, the whole town is a tourism overlay just doesn't really make sense before you really know how it's going to be implemented well. So I think it makes sense to, to again, to walk before you run and then um, t take feedback from the public, and if there's other places that we're missing, um, let's address those in the future. Any other comments or questions? Discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Gary Bogoff, Husik Road. Um, I know a little bit about Berkshire Brewing Company. Um, and we started off with two guys back in 1994. Uh, we employ about 50 people, a lot of them here in Deerfield. Uh, to have the ability to move forward on our own without having to go to the select board and bother them for every little thing we want to do would be a, a great uh, thing for us. Um, we love the town. We support the town. Uh, we wouldn't want to do anything to make us look bad. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'd appreciate your vote for this. Any other comments, discussion? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Opposed? Motion carries by two thirds. Article 11, uh, Mr. Wolfram. I move that the town amend the town of Deerfield zoning map by adding a new zone, tourist overlay district, include the parcels presented in the warrant and on file in the town hall as shown on the proposed zoning map dated October 4th, 2021, as presented in the handout. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Mr. Wolfram? Uh, this is basically a, uh, a sense of housekeeping uh, to update the uh, assessor's map and to uh, include the tourist overlay district that was just voted. The planning board have discussion on this? 
Planning Board unanimously approves this article. Did the Finance Committee have any? Not really. You just didn't know if you. We support it. Uh, any questions or discussion? Mr. Camosa. This kind of goes to what I was speaking to earlier. There's 24 lots allowed in this district. It should include all of C2 district. This is really spot zoning. Uh, you look at the map, I don't know if most of you have seen it. There's a parcel here that's included, this one's excluded. This one's included, this one's excluded. You go up the roadways, one, two, three, four are included, the ones over here are excluded. It's just not fair. Um, I'm not sure of all the legalities, of it, but I'd like to amend that motion to add the words all lots in the C2 zone at the end of the list of lots. That wouldn't change the article at all, just add that strip only the C2 areas along that road. Mr. Camosa, it's, it's town council's opinion that that would expand the motion in a way that proper notice had not been given. So that, that amendment would exceed the scope of what we could do here this evening. So. All right, with that said, Mr. Wolfham said it was just an outline of the lots where they were going to go. Attorney Mead, do you wish to comment? Um, the, because the advertisement included a specific set of lots, including it larger would be outside the scope under 40A Section 5 and therefore um, would require another advertisement. Well, with that being said, if the Attorney General deems a spot zoning, then the whole thing won't work anyways. Yep. It's my opinion that given the size of the area that it would not be spot zoning. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by two-thirds majority. Article 12, Ms. Wolfcool. Yes, I move that the town amend the Deerfield Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 179, Section 3800, Solar Energy Systems, by replacing the section in its entirety as presented in the special town meeting warrant. Second. Ms. Wolfcool. Yes, as uh, many of you remember, last June we did approve our new solar energy bylaw bylaws. Um, however, those were primarily addressing medium and large scale solar. There was a very strong request from many residents that we um, amend the so small scale solar bylaws and that is what we've done here, primarily through clarifications such as where the bylaws pertain only to medium or large scale systems. Uh, definitions, for example, the maximum size for small-scale solar ground-mounted systems is 660 square feet, and also a stronger correlation between other sections of our zoning bylaws, such as our use regulations and our dimensional use tables. Solar is a very fast-changing industry, and it is important for Deerfield to keep on top of the changes so that we can encourage alternate energy systems while still protecting our land and our residences. And since the planning board has made this motion, I'm assuming the planning board supports it? Correct. Planning board supports this. Are there any questions or comments, discussion? Yes, sir. Hi, Mark Brennan, uh, 66 Boynton Road. I'd like to make an amendment to change the uh, square footage for um, the uh, small solar energy systems from 660 square feet to 1,000 square feet. I'm a big fan of green energy and would like to see uh, our residents who might live in buildings that may not uh, be optimized for solar and may require more panels to be able to do so, especially in support of electric vehicles. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brennan, if that, uh, that motion will need to be in writing. So is there a second on Mr. Brennan's motion? Okay. Uh, so if you can take a moment and write that down. Uh, so right now we're just discussing the amendment to increase the square footage uh, from 660 to 1,000 square feet. Any questions or comments on that specifically? Yes, sir.
My name is Greg Franceschi, 80 North Main Street. I just would like to know um, where the numbers initially came from. It was 10,000, then it went down to 650, and now we're talking 1,000. I would also like to add my voice to the chorus that I think a larger number would be, a larger sized array would be better for everyone. Uh, obviously, we're, we're, we need to, as a local community, make yes. renewable energy as um, user-friendly as possible, and a lot of people um, don't have the option on their property to have um, a large array on their house, or they don't have um, sunny areas um, that are I also wanted to ask a question about how this affects carports. Are, car, are carports or canopies considered to be ground-mounted solar? Uh, we're in the midst of the amendment, but Ms. Wolfko, if you can just address most of that specific question. If I have all of the questions correct, uh, first of all, in terms of the 660 square feet, um, there are various and confusing standards within Massachusetts. 660 is one common uh, standard. We've actually seen 1,700 as another common standard. Uh, the planning board had a fair amount of uh, deliberation about the 660 and in um, discussion with some of the other boards as well as with the public, we, stayed, we, we selected the 660 instead of a larger amount. You're correct that if a resident wants to create a solar system that is greater than 660 square feet, that there is the possibility, if their residence, <clears throat> excuse me, allows to have it a roof-mounted system. Um, <clears throat> solar canopies are not considered to be ground-mounted systems. Solar canopies have a different definition of their own, so that falls into a a different category than the ground-mounted systems at 660 in this bylaw. Mr. St. Peter's on the motion to amend. Bruce St. Peter's, Snowberry Circle. This is not uh, refusing any homeowner to put more on it. All this is is, uh, is a uh, definition of the uh, where you would be required to go for a uh, site plan. Uh, the you can put 5,000 feet on your if you have a lot big enough. It's just that when you get over 660 square feet, you would have to go to the planning board for a site plan. And I'm not sure, but I do believe uh, if it's you come in with 750 or 800 feet, the planning board has the right to waive the site plan anyway. So, you know, if, if it's in an open area and so forth and they just feel it's not going to be detrimental to anybody and so forth, I believe they have that right anyway. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion to amend? Yes. Hi, I'm Pam Toshik from Upper Road, and I wanted to support the amendment to move the number up to 1,000 square feet. Our house has a roof that's not suitable for solar. We don't get enough sun on it, so we don't have that choice. Um, we installed some ground mount solar when we first moved into our house, and it's turned out to not be enough, and we're trying to reduce our fossil fuel use further. We've got a plug-in vehicle, which um, the whole country is going to be moving that way soon. And to have enough solar to support that, we need to expand our ground mount system. And without the amendment to this, I think we'd be in a situation where it would be cost prohibitive. All the additional requirements would make it so that it wouldn't really be possible for us to have ground mount solar just to support our home needs for electricity. So I'd like to see it amended to 1,000 square feet, please. Thank you. Yes, sir. Dave Farrick, Plain Road. Uh, I disagree with the amendment because I disagree with the overall uh, article. I don't feel we should be limiting to 660 square feet uh, from the 10,000. Battery technology has changed dramatically. 
This really shouldn't be about any alignment with utility standards, which I've heard in part uh, is what these numbers were based on. So I don't agree with the 1,000 uh, square foot because I don't agree uh, with the Article 12 amendment in general. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the, so we're just voting on the motion to amend. Uh, so again, the motion that was presented was to change uh, from 660 square feet to 1,000 square feet for small scale solar as defined under the underlying motion. All those in favor? We're all set over here. That motion carries, so we're back to the underlying motion as amended. Is there any other discussion on the motion as amended? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by two-thirds majority. I do want to just take a moment and thank FCAT for another great job this evening. Love you, FCAT. It's, uh, it hasn't been easy or necessarily pretty, but FCAT has been a, kind of a key accessible factor during the pandemic, and we appreciate everything they've done. So thank you. With that, I would uh, take a motion to dissolve. Motion to dissolve. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Take care. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you very much for coming out.